Hi there, Medical Wildcats. I'm Joseph Guggenheim. I'm a 1972 alum of the medical school, and I'm going to start a two-part presentation on pediatrics at Northwestern. Uh, perhaps this is a misnomer. It is really going to be about the evolution of our pediatric hospitals, from the eight-bed hospital that started in 1882 to the uh, innovative, modern 360-bed uh, Lurie Children's Hospital today. The first part will be on the, the Children's Memorial Hospital years. Uh, you can see in the two pictures here uh, how it went from an old house uh, to a modern facility on uh, uh, Fullerton Avenue. This picture uh, was made in 1886 and was not the original building, but it's often said to be the original building, but this is actually the second building, the first one being in 1882. So let's look at uh, Chicago during the late 19th century when Children's Memorial uh, began. Chicago was the fastest growing city in the United States, but it had an inadequate sewage system, which led to many infections, including typhoid and diarrhea. Most of the homes lacked indoor plumbing and the food, water, and milk were often contaminated. Child labor was common and there was no children's hospital in the city. Mary Thompson, one of the early female physicians in Chicago, started the Chicago Hospital for Women and Children uh, during the Civil War, and it had a total of 14 beds, with some for children, but there was no pediatric hospital per se. Children under the age of five accounted for the majority of all deaths in Chicago, almost 71% in 1971, the year of the fire. And wealthy people did not want to take their children to the hospital. They wanted them to be treated at home, and home remedies included goose grease for whooping cough and gin for scarlet fever. Infectious diseases, nutritional conditions, gastrointestinal diseases had a high mortality in children. Julia Porter was the founder of the first children's hospital. She was the daughter of the New Hampshire surgeon and the wife of an Episcopal clergyman and a wealthy philanthropist. Uh, she was born in 1846. The family moved to Chicago in 1835 uh, uh, before she was born. And this was actually two years before Chicago was incorporated. So Chicago was just a, a colony at the time. The family moved to uh, the Lincoln Park area in 1859 when uh, Julia was 13, and then to Wisconsin, Racine, Wisconsin in 1867. Uh, and then tragedy started in uh, Ms. Porter's life. Her father died uh, from a head injury in a freak carriage accident. Her husband died of acute appendicitis in 1830, 18, uh, at age 36. Uh, she returned to the Lincoln Park area to live with her mother in 1876 uh, to a home that was damaged by the 1871 fire. Her 13 year old son, Maurice, died of acute rheumatic fever in 1881 at the age of 13. Uh, she, she had moved to the, uh, the intersection of Belden Avenue and North Clark uh, which is just a few blocks southeast of the uh, Children's Memorial Hospital. She later moved to the northern suburb of Winnetka. In May 1882, uh, Julia Porter purchased a three-story house at the southeast corner of Belden and Halstead, which is shown in the purple box. Uh, you can see the upper triangle is where Children's Memorial would eventually be built. She named the hospital Maurice Porter Memorial Hospital in memory of her late son, and then changed it to Maurice Porter Children's Hospital in 1899. It was an eight bed hospital in an old home. She offered free care to children uh, between ages three and 13. Now, there are no known photographs of this original building. In 1883, she bought a nearby lot at the corner of Fullerton and Orchard uh, shown in the uh, purple box. And you can see in the uh, lower uh, part of the picture, the gray box uh, where the original building was. Uh, this building was opened in 1884, uh, but then demolished in 1931. And this is the building that is often depicted as the original building, although it is the second building. This building was later uh, expanded. In the first nine years, the annual admissions reached a high of 68 patients. In 1896, a wing was added uh, to the uh, second building and the bed capacity was increased to 50. The minimum admission age was then lowered to two years instead of three, 
but because the mortality was so high in infants, the mortality actually increased. Uh, since mortality was so high, the majority of children, uh, uh, the uh, uh, requirement was that the children were required to be baptized when they were admitted. Uh, the most common diagnoses at the time included malnutrition, starvation, marasmus, which we would probably call failure to thrive, gastroenteritis, and colitis. Uh, other common diagnoses were typhoid, anemia, pneumonia, cholera, and deformities. In the uh, period from 1883 until 1892, there were 232 admissions. The first records we have of the diagnoses were in the year 1891. There were 35 surgical cases, uh, as you can see listed on the left. The picture on the right shows Dr. Truman Miller, who was the first president of the medical staff. He was a surgeon, not a pediatrician. In the same year, 1891, uh, there were 26 uh, medical cases and the, they are listed on the left. Uh, in the middle of this list, scarlatina is what we would probably call uh, scarlet fever nowadays. In the book published 100 years ago on the history of surgery and medicine in Chicago, the author says, four hours a day were devoted to instructive work under the supervision of two teachers, and the children became quite adept at basket weaving, knitting, and sewing. Classes in reading and writing are held for the older convalescent children, and suitable instructive games arranged for the younger. So since uh, hospitalizations uh, were often quite extended, uh, the children, uh, uh, were kept busy. Mrs. Porter directed the hospital until 1893 when a, a board was formed called the Board of Lady Managers. In 1903, the name was changed to Children's Memorial Hospital in uh, 1904. Additional land was purchased in the, uh, uh, the triangle bounded by Fullerton, Lincoln and Orchard uh, and that's colored green. All the land was not purchased at one time, uh, so that is why I left some uh, white area around the Green Triangle. Uh, care was free for many decades, uh, which was underwritten personally by Mrs. Porter. The hospital had medical school affiliations uh, beginning in 1907. At first, they had affiliations with Rush uh, from 1907 to 1917. Some sources uh, of uh, from Northwestern say that the affiliation was 1909 to 1919, but uh, whatever, uh, it was a, a 10 year period in the early 20th century. The hospital then affiliated with the University of Chicago in 1917 until 1946 when it affiliated with Northwestern uh, and it has been affiliated with uh, Northwestern ever since. The plan was to build a pavilion style hospital and this was uh, thought to be a design that would minimize the risk of contagion. And pavilions were built. These were separate buildings, uh, each housing a, a certain number of patients. The first one being the 1908 Maurice Porter Pavilion. And then they were built uh, as shown uh, on the left. Uh, the Nellie Black Memorial Residence was built in 1932 along with the James Deering Memorial. Some of us may remember that as where we uh, had lectures in medical school. And then the Thomas Jones uh, Memorial Clinic building was built in 1940. The picture on the right shows uh, the Maurice Porter uh, building in the foreground and the Agnes Wilson Memorial in the background. As new pavilions were built, beds were increased. And you can see how the uh, bed count increased. It fell between 1926 and 1963. And this is because uh, there was less need for beds for convalescence and contagious diseases. A nursing school was established in 1894, but then it was closed in 1900 due to the lack of exposure to adult patients. And then it was reopened again in 1908 with two years spent at Children's Memorial and then one year spent with adult training at uh, Presbyterian Hospital. The Nellie Black Building is shown in the lower right that was opened in 1932 as a nurse's residence. It was later used for office space, psychiatric inpatients, and outpatient clinics. Heliotherapy became popular during the Great Depression. This was exposure to sunshine and fresh air, originally pioneered by Dr. August Rollier in Europe. It became popular during the Great Depression uh, as treatment for non-pulmonary TB, psoriasis, and uh, rickets. 
Uh, Dr. Isaac Apt in his textbook, uh, 1924 textbook, uh, said climatic therapy is a valuable adjunct in TB of the bone, hastening healing. And the facility was on top of the Agnes Wilson Pavilion, as shown in the top picture on the right. Tuberculosis of the bone was common in, that, uh, in the 1940s. Four children with TB of the bone infections were hospitalized for an average of one year. Seven patients with pulmonary TB were hospitalized for a total of 123 days. And four patients with uh, tubercular uh, meningitis were hospitalized for a total of 107 days, but all four died. Uh, Dr. Edward Ryerson joined the staff. Uh, he was an orthopedic surgeon who uh, had a special expert, expertise and interest in uh, tuberculosis infections of the bone and uh, polio. The mortality uh, uh, decreased uh, with advances in medicine. In the 1880s, when the hospital was founded, the mortality was uh, more than 50%. By 1899, it had dropped to 10%. But in 1907, it increased again, uh, this time to 24%. And that was attributed to admitting children less than two years of age. Infants had a, uh, still had a, 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 a dismal prognosis when admitted to the hospital. The mortality in 1910 was 15.5%, but still 50% of the children, uh, but 50% of the children with uh, malnourish, malnutrition, marasmus, and gastroenteritis uh, uh, died. By 1973, uh, attributed to the advent of antibiotics, the uh, mortality fell to 2%. The antibiotic era uh, began in 1939 with the use of sulfonilamide, sulfapyridine, a combination uh, often used in combination with horse and rabbit antiserum. Dr. Brenneman, who was chief of staff uh, 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 from 1921 to 1940, uh, said, in the many years of my medical experience, there has been no comparable event. It has come with such suddenness and such startling effect that it seems unbelievable. This uh, dramatically reduced uh, the mortality in patients with pneumonia, meningitis, and other infections. And for children less than 18 months, uh, the group with the uh, uh, bad prognosis uh, previously, uh, the mortality declined from 42% in 20, 1928 to 9% by 1939, all attributed to antibiotics. And then World War II came along. 23 physicians left in 1942. In order to keep the beds uh, fuller, uh, the upper age limit was raised to 15. Window blackouts, blood and sera shortages, and supply rationing became common. But penicillin was still available uh, at uh, Children's Memorial because of its status as an Illinois penicillin distribution site. Resident shortages were alleviated by filling the house staff positions with rotating interns, foreign and female residents. There were very few female residents uh, uh, in the system at that time. And you can see in this picture of Dr. Brenneman with his house staff, taken in 1924, that there was only one female uh, house staff member. And then after World War II, uh, Dr. Stanley Gibson became a, a chief of staff. He established a formal affiliation with Northwestern in 1946. The first black nurses were hired. The first black physician, Oliver Crawford, joined the staff in 1948. Full-time subspecialists were hired and a new bed tower, administration area and research facilities, as well as the Children's Plaza uh, Road between uh, Fullerton and Lincoln uh, was, were built. The buildings were built along uh, next to the street and the Central Triangle uh, remained uh, free of buildings for many years. It was renovated in the 1960s. It had originally been a grassy area which served as tennis courts and croquet courts for the residents and nurses play areas for the patients, and areas where outdoor meetings could be held for mothers and uh, hospital staff. And this is a picture of the campus in 1944. And you can see how the buildings are built next to the street and the area uh, uh, in the center of the triangle uh, was left empty with grass and trees. Outpatient services were established in 1902. Uh, uh, they quickly uh, uh, became uh, 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 very busy and they moved to Dow House in 1905 
and the building shown on the upper right, uh, which was demolished in 1933. Uh, the popularity of outpatient services uh, increased very rapidly and new facilities had to be found. By 1908, uh, moved to the 1886 building and then to the Agnes Wilson building and then to the Thomas Jones uh, building. And there were no x-ray techs. The x-ray equipment was brought in in 1907 and the nurses took the x-rays. And you can see how uh, filled the uh, clinic in 1915 was. Rheumatic heart disease was a, uh, a problem uh, uh, in the early years of the hospital. This was the cause of death of, uh, of uh, Julia Porter's son, Maurice. The children that had uh, rheumatic heart disease were hospitalized for up to uh, six months. And the therapy basically consisted of sedentary activity and the use of aspirin for its anti-inflammatory effect, monitoring the sed rate. Dr. Stanley Gibson uh, became chief of staff and chair of pediatrics at Northwestern in 1939. He was recognized as a national authority on pediatric heart disease. Blue baby heart surgery uh, uh, began at uh, uh, Children's in uh, 1946. This was first performed in September 1946 by Dr. Willis Potts, aided by Drs. Sid Smith and Stanley Gibson, done on 21-month-old uh, Diane Schnell. Uh, and this is a picture of uh, a Diane uh, several years later with uh, Dr. Potts and the dog Caesar, uh, which was the uh, uh, dog that uh, Dr. Potts perfected the aortopulmonary uh, anastomosis on. Uh, Dr. Potts performed 240 aorta pulmonary anastomosis within two years. And the Children's Hospital became a uh, center for uh, this procedure. Here's a picture of Dr. Potts uh, playing a board game with one of his patients. And on the right is a hospital bill from 1953 uh, showing that uh, there was a, bill, a charge of $313 uh, for treatment of uh, Tetralogy of Fallot. Dr. Bigler became chief of pediatrics in 1949, and he recognized the importance of research. He expanded uh, the full-time staff. Uh, all staff uh, were voluntary until 1930. He was instrumental in converting the hospital from a pavilion-style hospital as popular in Europe to a more modern facility. And uh, uh, with uh, the passage of years, the cost of care increased. Uh, Ms. Porter originally intended the uh, care to be free, and she personally underwrote all costs. All care was free uh, from the time the hospital began in 82 until 1903. In 1920, private patients were charged $1 a day if they could pay. In 1932, the hospital began to accept state and county funds. In 1947, 63% of the uh, all care was free at the time. But by 1958, the cost of free care uh, was over $1 million. And the hospital relied on uh, money raised by philanthropy and also uh, sales at the White Elephant Rummage Shop in the nearby neighborhood. New facilities were needed. In 1957, the administration decided new buildings were needed to replace the Maurice Porter and Agnes Wilson Pavilion. But in the same year, a consultant had recommended for the first time moving the uh, Children's Hospital to the Streeterville campus with the other Northwestern buildings, uh, but uh, this was not done. Demolition of the uh, uh, Porter and Wilson pavilions began in 1960, and uh, uh, directors again considered moving the hospital to the uh, Northwestern campus uh, between 67 and 73. Uh, they voted twice, once in 1970 and 73, uh, to remain in the Lincoln Park area. But finally, in 2006, they voted uh, to uh, move to the Northwestern campus, which was done in 2012. These pictures show the uh, construction that began in 1961 uh, with the opening of the bed tower in 62. Uh, you can see the uh, demolition uh, looking west uh, toward Lincoln Avenue and the uh, beginnings of the unpaved uh, uh, Children's Plaza cut through between uh, Fullerton and Lincoln. In the lower picture, you see the demolition beginning for the uh, Maurice uh, Porter Pavilion and a new bed tower in the background. 
The Children's uh, Plaza driveway uh, was completed in 1962. Four new floors were added to the bed tower in 82, and the uh, Croc building uh, was uh, uh, completed in 1981. This was named for McDonald's former CEO, Ray Kroc, who made a significant donation to the hospital to build a three-story Ray Kroc Diagnostic and Treatment Center. This included a radiology center, operating rooms, and a 25-bed emergency room. Then things got interesting in 2008. In December 2008, federal marshals arrested then-Illinois Governor uh, Rod Blagojevich uh, for soliciting bribes. Time Magazine said he was either stupid, delusional, or some combination of both. He threatened to revoke an $8 million uh, funding to the hospital if the hospital did not make a $50,000 uh, contribution to his campaign. He considered himself a presidential candidate or at least a candidate for a cabinet position or ambassadorship. Uh, he was tried and sentenced to 14 years in prison. Uh, he did not even serve eight years. His sentence was commuted by Trump. Moving day into the new uh, uh, Ann and Robert H. Lurie Memorial Hospital was Saturday, June 9th, 2012. The doors to Children's Memorial were locked for the final time. All 147 patients that were in the hospital were transferred uh, on the 3.1 mile route to the new hospital. Uh, but uh, uh, it went off without a hitch, except uh, traffic was worse than expected because it was a Saturday, it was a beautiful June day. People were going to the beach and to Lincoln Park, and there was a sold out Brad Paisley concert at Wrigley Field. So the triangle today has undergone some uh, major changes. Uh, demolition began in 2016, uh, four years after the uh, uh, hospital moved. Uh, the neighbors were getting tired of seeing the vacant structure and said that it was uh, uh, a place for rats to live. Uh, the uh, hospital was re replaced by some retail space, twin apartment towers, and a senior living facility. The uh, uh, apartments uh, housed 540 units, and there was 154,000 square feet of retail space with some green areas left in the original uh, green triangle of the Children's Hospital. This is a, a, the last aerial a photograph known for the, uh, uh, de the campus before the uh, demolition began. And you can see the triangle buildings on the uh, upper right and then the multi-story parking garage uh, in the lower uh, part of the picture on the south side or west side of Lincoln. Uh, and then the uh, uh, buildings on the other side, the, the Deering building and the nurses dorm on the north side of Fullerton. This is all the property of Children's Hospital. This is what was demolished. You can see that the uh, heating plant on the uh, east side of Lincoln and the multi-story garage on the uh, west side of Lincoln uh, were left intact. And this is an art artist's picture of uh, uh, the replacement. You can see the two um, apartment buildings. Uh, you can see the uh, 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 senior living facility on the north side of Fullerton and the multi-story garage uh, left intact on the west side of Lincoln Avenue. So let's get together again virtually next month. It will be on part two of the amazing uh, 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 Ann and Robert H. Lurie Hospital, uh, a state-of-the-art facility uh, that it, uh, has been incredible. Uh, in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay connected. And let's get together again virtually next month. Thank you.